The communication blind spot caused by texting. Hi, my name's Ed Riggins, but most people just call me Riggo, and welcome back to Thoughts for Thursday. Among the many great gifts I have in, at this stage of life are my friendships with younger women and men. I think they enjoy somebody having somebody around to bounce ideas off of who's a little bit farther down the trail. As for what's in it for me, my standing joke is, hey, I, I need you guys around to keep me as I age from becoming that guy who's two sentences away from saying, get off my lawn. Now, these relationships remind me that people have different modes of communication based on when they were born. Younger people tend to default to text. This wouldn't be a problem if it weren't for the profound limitations of text as a communication tool. We humans have a tendency to avoid conflict. We humans have a tendency to blame others when things go wrong. Both of these very human foibles can be made much worse if we choose the wrong communication tool. Let's take a little walk down memory lane. In the 20s, the landline in the U.S. became pretty commonplace. In the 80s, corporate voicemail came along. In the 90s, email use became pretty widespread. And then in 2007, an important thing happened. Texts surpassed voice calls. In 2010, FaceTime popularized free video calls. And then in 2015, because everybody was texting, emoji was the word of the year. Now think about this with me for a moment. I seem to recall that in 2007, kids got cell phones at about the age of 15, which means they were born in about 92. We've done a great disservice to people born after about the early 90s by failing to communicate to them that text is really only useful for facts and statistics. It's not useful for conveying emotional content or nuance. There's a widely quoted study by a guy named Albert Moravian who said 7% of communication is from the words. 7% is what you can get from a text. 38% comes from tone of voice. You hear my tone of voice going up and down as I'm talking to you now. 55% over half comes from body language. Looking into people's eyes, conveying their facial expressions and how they move their body. You want to convey to somebody you're running 10 minutes late, great, shoot them a text. You want to convey to somebody you're having an emotion, you're feeling bad, glad, sad, had, something like that? I'd say text is useful, but really only for scheduling purposes, to schedule a phone call, to schedule a video call, or maybe better yet, best of all, schedule a personal meeting. You're trying to decide on when you're, uh, what mode of communication to use, I'd suggest you ask yourself these questions. What's at stake is the first question. How well do we know each other? What complexity are we dealing with? How much complexity is involved in whatever it is we're dealing with? And then lastly, to deal with that complexity, what do we have in terms of time and resource, or in terms of resource, in terms of time and money? Look, you're just clowning around with your friends shooting emojis back and forth, nothing wrong with that. But if a miscommunication could result in you losing something important to you, like your job or some money, or worst of all, a piece of your heart, I'd say it's time to put on your big girl pants, put on your big boy pants, if there's something real at stake, and have a real conversation. Hope you join me next week. Thanks. Door.